We've all heard of Sleeping Beauty who just slept until that prince woke her up. Prince Philip, I believe it was. My One of my favorite, favorite fairy tales. And it has been wandering around since the 1500s. But before everyone says, oh no, not more fairy tales, no. I also love Peter and the Wolf. Um, but those are fairy tales, all by very good ones. But what happens when the young girl sleeps, 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 and there's no one there to wake her up? Not even, well, let's hear the story. There was a young girl in Sweden by the name of Carolina Olsen. Born in 1861 and October 29th of 1861 in Monsterio, Sweden in a tiny village. And she was the only female of five brothers. So six kids in all and she was the second to oldest one. She spent her years uh, first few, you know, years while her brothers went to school and everything back in those days, I guess the girls didn't. She would help her mother with the cleaning and all that. Well, they were a poor family. They were a fisherman family. So, and in her spare time, she would go to the river, whatever, do whatever. And um, th that's what happened on this February 18th of 1876. She was 14 going on 15. She crossed a frozen river when she slipped on the ice. Some say she almost drowned, while others say she suffered a severe brain injury. Anyway, she returned home with a swollen face, an excruciating toothache. By the evening, the anguish had become unbearable and the girl's parents had concluded that she had been subjected to a magical influence. They thought the witches were. You know. They sent her to bed, resolving to act based on her condition in the morning. So, when Carolina was 14, she went to sleep and, well, she slept and she slept and she slept and she slept. A poor fisherman, Carolina's father, was unable to pay for a doctor's appointment because you can imagine. Your daughter's just sleeping and sleeping the days away, the hours away, the, the days, the weeks. So, the family members and friends got together and they got a, they sent her to a doctor. They said finally the neighbors came together and raised the money to, to, for a needed contact with the doctor. But the doctor couldn't wake her up. Over the following year, the doctor visited her, checked her out and everything, and she remained unchanged. Not worse, not better, just unchanged. It wasn't until he wrote to the editor of one of the most respected medical journals in Scandinavia that he received a response from his peers. Carolina remained in a deep slumber despite the efforts of many other physicians who came to her house and her hair and the nails also ceased to grow so they were a bit concerned but of course she wasn't really getting much nourishment right um, if I remember right her parents fed her had to feed her like milk or something sugar milk or something so she wasn't getting all the vitamins and everything you need for your your hair and your nails to grow good for a month in 1892 the sleeping girl was taken to a hospital to rouse her awake. They even used an electric current to run through her body, and that didn't wake her up. So, they, um, everything they tried to do, she didn't wake up. They even stuck like needles, pin needles in her feet. That didn't wake her up. I think to most of us, even the thought of that would wake us up. Sadly enough, her mother and two brothers died by 1904. I think her brothers had drowned or something. The nur nurse was brought in to care for the girl and Caroline started to sob uncontrollably after her brother's death in 1907. Another guess, another brother. 
even though she was still asleep. It's like she was asleep, but sometimes she would sort of get into a medium sleep where she would, maybe she would know, or probably like a coma patient a little bit, you know. You, you hear things a little bit around, you you know a few things, but you're just not waking, you know, waking up. But she woke up finally in 1908. And of course she discovered everything in her life had been altered. And she was a 46 year old lady now, but she looked like she was probably in her 20s. And um, she didn't, you know, obviously she didn't age very much because um, she wasn't stressed out. She wasn't, you know, that's why most people age because they get stressed out, uh, you know, but she was not. She was sleeping. She got her beauty sleep. Like most of us would love to do, even though I don't think anyone would want to sleep for 32 years. But you can imagine when you wake up and you slept for eight to 10 hours or something and you're thinking, hmm, you know, you can imagine what she felt after 32 years of sleep. Of course, the word spread that the sleeping beauty had awoken. People all around the globe were ecstatic about it. Journalists from across the world came to her house to interview her. But they were, got tired of this, so they started to hide. So they obviously, you know, for the people who are like, she was just doing this for attention, obviously not. Because that would have been a time to shine, you know. And can you imagine a 14, 15 year old girl wanting to put the best years of her womanhood life on hold so she could have this big I slept for 32 years I don't think so because there were people who said well maybe she and her mom her family were all fooling you know well she didn't get to get married she didn't have kids none of these things that a woman young girl would want to have um didn't get to go to parties I <laughs> didn't her life would have sucked if she would have just been pretending. So, no. Plus, don't forget, electric shock and needles did not wake her up. The doctors and everyone else, everything, one would have been in on it. That would have been just too big of a thing. People thought she was a froster, but she wasn't. I don't know. You, you hear this thing, these kinds of things happening every once in a while, you know. Someone goes into a coma or something and they, they are there for 20 years or 10 years or she just happened to be for 32 years. Um, and she came out of it. I don't really think they considered her to be in a coma, but then what else would it have been? I don't know. Um, the brain is weird. It, it sometimes, you know, it needs to, when it, if there's an injury like that, it, it just, that's, I guess it's a way of it's healing itself. I would have been interested to know if she had per participated in any kind of other timelines when she was, but they did ask her if she had any strange dreams and she said something about um, seeing blue faces in the ocean when her brothers did drown, so they think that maybe that was it, you know. But anyway, it's always remained a mystery, so, but she lived to 88 years old she still lived like another 40 years you know so she got to make up for some of the time that she was asleep so wow right <laughs> but anyway I just thought that story was mega interesting but uh, there I'm sure there are a lot of stories out there where there are people here and there well I don't know if they slept for that long but like I said slept you know have been out for 10 years, 11 years, 20 years. There was another um, story I heard one time, I don't remember the details, about a woman who was at some kind of party or something, and dinner party, and she all of a sudden, out of nowhere, seemingly, had like a gigantic headache. 
And so they took her home. She was screaming in pain um, later and in the middle of the night. They took her to the hospital. She went into a coma, and I think it was 10 or so many years she stayed in the coma. I think sometimes that's just the brain's way of, um, you know, <laughs> healing. So anyway, that is it for now on uh, Lavender Rose, the Midnight Hour. And everyone have a wonderful, remarkable, terrific Tuesday. And over and out.